What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Unknown Coding's channel. Got a little bit of a different style project today. Uh, kind of incorporates numerous things that I've done on this channel, but all in one. And what I'm doing is a sign for uh, like a commercial industrial shop. They don't do uh, custom stuff at this location. So uh, I am tasked with making their custom sign. So let's get into it. All right, now they got all these marked. You can see exactly where the edges of that text are. Um, we're going to be doing red in here, obviously, but this is the area that I'm worried about. And we're going to be doing like an engine turn look. You can see up in here. Do an engine turn look across all these letters in the shape of the letter, which is why you can roughly see the FPC. So we're going to do that. All right, guys, so I actually didn't record me doing the engine turning. Here's what the overall finish ends up looking like. And here's just a quick video I found online kind of showing the process. Uh, I did it with a Scotch-Brite pad. Some people do it with a wire wheel. But you're just uh, manipulating the aluminum with these, you know, a spinning tool to make it look like this. Uh, it's pretty common. It's kind of an old school technique uh, still used in sign making and stuff like that today. So now that that's all done, I did a candy gold over top of just that area. Um, didn't show that either. I don't know what I was doing at the beginning of this video. Clearly not paying attention because I wasn't recording most of what I needed to. Uh, from now on, everything's recorded though. Don't worry. So candy gold on this. And now I only want the candy gold in the small area that I did like the manipulated metal, you know, like the engine turn style. Um, so here I am just blowing it all off. Um, I basically don't want any other color to blend with this and have it affect that color because the next color I'm going to spray is red on this. And if I left that candy on there, it would affect the red. Um, here you can see the red. This is just, I think it's Cardinal, I think this is RDO 1 or 3. I honestly don't remember. It's a Cardinal red though. Um, once again, I'm taking care to spray it kind of only where I need it, uh, which is going to be on a majority of this particular panel. Um, you'll end up seeing, I kind of, yeah, cut these corners down and work to avoid certain areas. Um, I guess as I continue just to spray this, I don't have to walk you through this entire thing, but if you like powder coating and powder coating content, or just want to support this channel, uh, please hit that subscribe button, give this video a like, um, or a dislike. If you don't like this video, hit dislike. Um, uh, that gives me just as much feedback, honestly. Uh, obviously prefer likes no matter what, but <laughs> it is what it is. Um, also, leave a comment. If you have any uh, comments or questions about this project or would like to see some other projects, feel sure to mention that down below. So now that I got the red where I need it, I obviously don't want it all over my gold. So I'm just taking a blowgun and just lightly blowing it all off right here. Now, I have a lot of room to play with most of this. It doesn't have to be perfect lines for all this. I mean, as you can tell, this is already not perfect lines because most of this panel is actually covered by the top panel. So threw that thing through the oven, float it out, and now this is the secondary panel sitting on top of it, and you can start to see kind of the design going together. And this is the little pen that I just showed is a little Stabilo pen uh, that's actually designed to be wiped away easily, and I'm just marking the little edges so I can do this taping. Um, the tape is because I need just that area to be red. Uh, just that whole center area, so from the outside edges. Right here, I'm spraying Prismatic Universe. Uh, if you don't know what that is, it's a rainbow prismatic flake. Uh, looks amazing in the sun. Uh, pretty much just looks black in low light. Uh, black, maybe like a really dark, dingy gray. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and spray all this off, or spray all the edges of this, rather, and then I'm going to have to clean off all this powder. Now, you could ask, why didn't you just mask the whole thing? And... I agree. I should have masked the whole thing. Um, <laughs> I wasn't thinking about this part. And honestly, I'm kind of just going with the flow on this sign. I didn't have like a 100% pre-thought out thing. I was given some colors that had to be used. And then I was just given, you know, liberty to do whatever. And by colors that, to be used, it was red. It had to have red in it. So <laughs> I was literally allowed to do anything I wanted after that. Um Obviously, you'll end up seeing like a big portion of this is red or the parts that are relevant to red. So this thing's all ready for the oven after I vacuumed and wiped all this down. So it's just going to go in for a flow out so I can pull the tape off, essentially. Uh, still got more to do. So this is after I threw it through the oven. Going to be yanking the tape. Going to want to make sure on a project like this, you definitely pull the tape while it's warm. 
You don't want the powder to be super gooey. You don't want it to get stringy. So you can do little test edges and make sure that it's not stringing out. As you can see, this comes off really easy when it's warm. Leaves a nice clean line, doesn't leave any residue. You can see the Prismatic Flake from Prismatic Universe looking absolutely amazing. Uh, the rest of this thing looks good. I mean, all, all my lines that matter are there. But then there's this. Now, this is a thing where had I masked it all off, this probably wouldn't have happened. This big goof right here. But luckily for me, I have a lot of play in this sign. Um, I set this up to allow myself to do these lines to not be perfect. Now we're moving on to the front panel of this sign. Spraying the outside of this is Prismatic Cosmos. Almost the same as Prismatic Universe. It has a little bit less flake, and the flakes are bigger, but it's the same flake. Uh, in the same way both Prismatic uh, I'm doing this as you'll see eventually it's kind of working as like a gradient in the center. And I'll be honest, I thought that it would have a little bit more gradient. You can tell the difference of the flake. Pearl black or sable black, tuxedo black, any of the other like good metallic blacks, uh, high metallic black. Um, but it's too late now. So I vacuumed off all that, blew off all the powder that was on the outside of that, put it in the oven, do a partial cure, get it flowed out once again. And here I'm using a gunmetal gray color. I think this one is Desmo. I'm doing the exact same thing, spraying the areas that I need and then vacuuming off all the rest. I only want that uh, middle bar, I guess, between the main sign and the outer loop to be done in this color. So it's a little tedious going through all this to make sure it's clean. Uh, anybody who's done the wiping process knows that you know the static in the powder causes it to jump right back onto your clean areas. So I'm constantly going over it and checking it multiple times. And now we're moving on to Super Chrome Plus. Uh, once again, kind of the same thing, except this is the whole center of the sign. So now I'm just going to, you know, vacuum and wipe off all the outside, you know, the two outside rings, whatever those might be called. And I guess with this little gap of time here, uh, if you guys are powder coaters or just like powder coating, uh, I have a Facebook group called UKC Army that has tons of helpful people. Um, lots of good questions, lots of good information in there. So if you guys have questions about powder coating, just want to learn more, that's a great spot to do it. So I encourage you to check it out. So now you can see Prismatic Cosmos, Desmo, and uh, Super Chrome Plus on this sign. As you can tell, it's coming out great so far. Um, putting Tiger's Bengal Clear over it to protect it, of course. Um, actually, two of these colors basically require a clear to be outside. So I'm doing the whole thing in a nice gloss clear. Protected overall. Also doing the back panel for this uh, in the same Tiger Bengal Clear. Um, hopefully you guys can kind of start to see where this is coming together. But if you can't imagine it, it looks something like this. So it came out exactly how I wanted. Uh, especially since I was just kind of raw dogging this one <laughs> in a sense. I was just kind of guessing how like the direction I wanted to take it. I had to incorporate the red, which I did of course. That's the engine turn with the candy gold over top. Um, I did not get any pictures of this thing installed. I wish I would have, pictures or video, but it's pretty high up on the building. Looks great. It's very visible. Definitely the type of sign to get a lot of attention, uh, which it does. Uh, the, the building itself is, I'm not going to say bland, but it's like every other commercial building. So when you pull up and see this sign, it makes a huge difference. Uh, this location has not had a sign like this out front for, I want to say it's like seven years, something like that. Uh, and so now this is the sign out there. So obviously a big step up, uh, super cool project. Uh, I was actually really proud of the way this came out. And I love being able to just have a customer, you know, a customer or a project where I can just do whatever I want and make it work. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you next time.